and hello welcome welcome to this video uh, I'm going to continue our open form discussion so in the last video I just uh, ran briefly ran through how to make a new branch and commit changes to that new branch pushing it up to git and we see that on uh, github uh, we see on github uh, uh, we see that this um, new branch has been created called experimental rents and what we can do is to make commits to this branch and push it up without changing anything. Okay. Without changing anything on this one. Okay. All right. So anyway, there was an error just now because when I try to change it to the master branch here, when I just select this master branch, um, there's there's uh, an error because both of these files are absent from the master branch. So if I if I click it here, there is an error, and this is very cute the Star Wars reference. This is not the web page I'm looking for, but yes, uh, it is not there. Okay, so um, what you need to do is actually to navigate back to the main uh, folder, and you just uh, go to master, and it will change for you. Okay, so this is this is what you can do, and all right. Um, now we can start to get a little bit into the meat of the the situation, the the simulation. So let's go to uh, Pimpleform, uh, our Pimpleform template, and okay. Uh, what what we want to do here is basically uh, a few things. We know we know that. Um, we know that uh, our our pipe is kind of big, right? And the patches aren't so nice. Okay, so we have to make do with what we have, make do with the tools we have to make a simulation uh, that's you know viable. So what are the basic steps, right? If we forget, uh, I mean, you can look at my mesh generation script. It just basically tells you all the stuff that we are doing. One is to restore the zero directory, which I will carry on in a shortly. Then there's block mesh and snappy hex mesh. Okay, so what does the zero, restoring zero directory do? Basically, I'm doing CPAR of I'm I'm copying everything from the zero original and doing it, uh, putting it in a zero file, and then I'm running block mesh. Okay, so i um, remember this nn sign actually runs one command after the other, and then I'm running snappy hex smash and then I'm doing override okay so this mm, this one this uh, three commands I execute together so you know uh, save a little bit of time and you know I don't need to keep typing again and again it's pretty useful okay so I'll do this so this thing takes about 30 seconds to finish it takes about 30 seconds to finish so yeah so wait to wait for a while for these things to finish all right and while while we are doing that uh, there's one more thing that you probably can do okay so okay it looks like this thing is finished so I didn't have to wait too long now I can just do a touch um, uh, what do you call this? <clears throat> Pipe dot foam. All right. Okay, I do a touch pipe dot foam. What that does is that it allows para view to uh, view the files. So let me go and view the files there. Okay, and there should be an intermediate plus here pipe dot foam. Okay, so what? You probably have seen this file before many many times already. You see here is a 40 meter long pipe with a diameter. Okay, this is a diameter of about one meter. That's that's actually a pretty huge pipe, and I don't want to simulate something so big. Okay, and if you remember the way we did our topo set and uh, create patch. If you want, uh, we are doing a topo set and create patch. Um, that actually allows us to select um, faces, you know, arbitrarily, arb arbitrarily. Okay. So, 
let's say the the way I kind of taught uh, or the way, the way I was talking about is basically I'm drawing an imaginary box over let's say somewhere near the end okay so let's use surface with edges so somewhere near the end here okay somewhere near the end here all right and I'm supposed to take this patch this this uh, part here as the inlet patch and then on the other side I also want this to be an outlet patch and we saw that the way that you know doing it that way is not very good because the shape of the patch isn't as smooth as we would like so what are some tools that we can use to uh, separate patches for a relatively simple geometry like this Okay, so I want to introduce you to two tools here. Uh, one is called transform points, which helps us to shrink, uh, shrink um, this um, file down, this mesh down, to something more palatable, something that's uh, where we want it to be. Because you know, when we generate um, STL files, either using FreeCAD or some Microsoft file. Uh, uh, AutoCAD or whatever, um, the dimensions are in mm. So if uh, you you have an STL file, okay, you have an STL file that is in a uh, FreeCAD, okay, or you you have STL files that are made by CAD software, computer aided design software. Um, the dimensions are always in millimeters. So when you try to make a forty millimeter pipe. The STL file will just ha have a number, which is called forty. Okay, Open Foam will read that same number forty and interpret it to be forty meters, which is exactly what we don't want. Okay, so what we got to do is to kind of uh, have a way to shrink things down. So this this uh this tool is called Transform Points. It is available in most, if not all, branches of Open Foam. Open Foam. ESI version, the open form, the org version, you should also have it. Okay, and auto patch is also available there. So uh, this is one of the one of the files. Okay. All right, where is it? Let me let me, let me take a look. Where is auto patch? I'll find the documentation for you. Open form, not just any auto patch. Right. So let's see. Yes, open form auto patch. Okay, so this is what the auto patch uh, files look like. Uh, it says auto patch options, which you can use that overwrite again. Then you put a feature angle, which is how many angles in degrees, as you can see here. How many angles in degrees is the threshold for you to make a new uh, patch, so to speak. Okay, so uh, that's a load of information. But let's let's put it all concretely. Um, oops, let's put it all uh com more concretely by trying to let us you know have a yeah trying to give us more or less a uh, handle of what's going on here. Okay, so first thing first, I want I want to resize I want to resize everything right. So the let's say you run your snappy hex mesh with block mesh already and you know your pipe is really really big. So you have uh or you have your pipe geometry, your pipe mesh, and it will be inside this file called poly mesh. So transform points only works when you know you have a poly mesh file with all your mesh points in there. So what you can do is to scale it. So if you're not sure what to do, you can always type uh, transform points first. Okay, when you load up your open form, transform points, and of course they'll give you an error. But uh, what this tells you is indeed that you know uh, this this uh, this uh, function is indeed available on open form. Okay, and then it'll tell you some clues. Say no operations applied. Please use at least one of the following. So what we want to do is use the option called scale. All right. So let's try transform points. That's scale. 
Okay, so it says transform point scale requires an argument. Basically, it needs to uh, it needs you to tell it, okay, how many how by how many times you want to scale, uh, uh, like either expand or shrink, you know that uh, mesh size. So let's do transform points, okay, scale. So I'll need to put it in some uh, so-called uh, apostrophes or inverted commas. Okay, I want to shrink it by 100 times. So basically what you see here in Paraview is a 40 meter long pipe. I don't want 40 meter long pipe and a 1 meter in diameter pipe. I don't, I don't want a 1 meter in diameter pipe either. So let, let's shrink it down from 1 meter to maybe 1 centimeter. Okay, one centimeter is something, uh, I mean, you can hold it in your hand and all that. And 40 meters, if we shrink it down 100 times, it will be about 40 centimeters. That's not very long at all. Okay, so that's roughly what we want to shrink our uh, pipe to. So what we can do is this. We can shrink it by 100 times by entering the number 0 0.01. So this is the scaling factor for the x direction. It means that whatever whatever uh, number that is representing the x direction, for example, if let's say the length from uh, you know this end to uh, one end to the other of the pipe, you can sort of consider it an x direction. Uh, that's one meter. So I want to multiply that by 0 0.01. Okay, I do that and the x direction will shrink, uh, will be multiplied by 0 0.01 and it will shrink by 100 times. Same thing for the y direction, same thing for the z direction. Okay, so uh, I mean, if you do it this way, you can shrink the x, y, and z direction as and how you like. You can make it into an oval shape, uh, but I'm not going to do that. Do that. Uh, I'm just going to use transform points as is. Okay, so you can see that it's uh, very quick, uh, and it will write all the files into the poly mesh. So if we select this and we press F5, you can see that the whole thing has actually shrunk a lot. By 100 times in fact. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, give it this one. Yes, okay. Just press any of this on here if you, you find the scaling is really off. As you can see, the new mesh is much smaller. The it is actually 0 0.004 and these are in meters now okay so this is about uh, you no know, 4 mm uh, in both ways or 5 mm in both ways so 5 mm plus 5 mm that's one centimeter that's exactly the number we are looking for so this is what transform points does it's a very convenient tool to excuse me it's a very convenient tool to shrink and expand your ge geometry which is very useful, especially once you you have things such as you know snappy hex mesh, etc., etc. Okay, so that's what transform points actually does for you. Okay, so this is your mesh now; it's very very fine. Okay, it should be able to run a Reynolds average Navier-Stokes simulation. Okay, okay, so we want to tackle the other problem now is how do we how do we change the the patches? Okay. How do we change the patches here uh, into one for the inlet, one for the outlet? Okay, so it is still not separated. So one thing we can do is uh, use this tool called auto patch. Okay, auto patch here it says auto patch. Uh, you can give it some options and then you can type this thing called feature angle. Okay, feature angle. So what is feature angle? Okay, so basically. Uh, you can think about it like this all right uh, let me delete all of this let me delete all of this and let's let's uh, let's think about it this way all right so you have a cylinder like so very poorly drawn cylinder and let's say you you have this very rounded shape right okay how is uh, open foam oh sorry how is open foam going to know if this uh, shape, okay, uh, how, how is it going to differentiate between patches? So you want this to be so-called an inlet, 
and you want this to be an outlet all right that's the idea you want one to be an inlet one to be an outlet how then do you distinguish okay this you want this to be some sort of a pipe wall how are we supposed to distinguish the pipe wall from the inlet and from the outlet okay so very simple here is when uh, when you use this thing auto patch okay auto patch is going to take a look at let's say one of these uh, faces here okay uh, let's see whether I can zoom in yeah all right so auto patch is going to take a look remember we have many many faces as you see many many squares here uh, one of these squares yeah this one of these squares here is a face so uh, auto patch is going to take a look at one of these squares and is going to take a look at the adjacent square so this is two of these squares two of the faces and what is it going to do okay let's let's do it let's give it a cross-sectional view so let's say you you have a uh, you have this uh, sort of thing here so you have a face here phase one okay phase one and this is phase two okay so two faces uh, apologize uh, let's let me write it clear sorry if it's not clear let me try and make it clearer so this phase one and this is phase two all right so what's auto patch gonna do it's going to try and measure the angle between phase 1 and phase 2. So it's going to try to measure the angle. Okay? So this angle, maybe it's something... I mean, I'm not drawing it to scale, but... Uh, maybe you give it about 10 degrees, right? 10 degrees. Okay? Uh, just an example, alright? So if it's at 10 degrees, uh, how is auto patch going to know whether... Uh, phase 1 and phase... Phase 2 and phase 1, are they the same patch? Okay, if your angle is small, if your angle is small, because you know this this is on the surface of a cylinder, and usually this angle here is pretty small, you kind of want this to be sort of the same pet, uh, same, same patch. Okay, because both phase one and phase two ideally should be, uh, on a wall patch. All right, so, all right, uh, what happens at let's say, okay, this end over here. You will have one face like this and one face like this. And what's auto patch gonna do? It's again going to measure the angle. Now this angle is equals to 90 degrees. Okay, 90 degrees. Alright, so this is uh, let's call it phase three, and this is phase four. So you want phase four to be part of a so-called inlet and outlet patch right you see inlet patch okay you want it to be part of an inlet patch you want the other part to be so-called part of an outlet patch all right how how's it gonna say okay so if uh, the angle is high enough for example the angle is equal to 90 degrees then auto patch is gonna say hey um maybe this angle is too high i suspect phase four may be part of a different patch okay maybe an inlet patch so to speak okay so a patch is a group of cells that you know you can assign a boundary condition to so you want phase four to be part of that new patch all right so well how so we can say that um this 10 degrees here is too small this 90 degrees here is too big so we need to give it a sort of a threshold angle so maybe we give it something like 75 degrees so 75 degrees is less than 90 degrees so any any face where, where the angle is more than you know 75 degrees this this angle here is more than 75 degrees it's going to auto patch is going to say hey i i'm going to make a new patch from it and anything where the angle is less than 75 degrees Okay, auto patch is gonna say, hey, this this angle here is very small. Uh, I'm going to assume it's part of the same patch. So that's what auto patch is there for. All right, so let's let's do some changes. We can type auto patch. All right. So you type uh, you you press the tab button. It will tell you 
no many things you can do with it what we want to do of course is to overwrite okay and we give it the appropriate angle in case you forget you can always take a look at this open foam file here auto patch options auto uh, feature angle so the option I use here is overwrite okay or uh, auto patch overwrite and if you're not sure if you forget this link there's something very useful here you can type auto patch doc it will give you the link to go to the browser okay it will give you the link to go to the browser and it will give you sort of the guides okay so apparently this this uh, this doesn't seem to work all right this is supposed to work and it's supposed to bring you bring you to the documentation apparently probably probably they rewritten some of the things there so it's a little out of date but okay um, not not every not every uh, files like that but anyway I digress auto patch let's overwrite and what do we overwrite okay we want to overwrite uh, what do you want to overwrite we want to overwrite uh, with the angle of 75 degrees so we'll do that and what do we see here okay the feature angle is uh, 75 we have assigned 1544 uh, 1500 ish faces to auto 1 auto 0 the rest is to auto 1 and the uh, remainder is to auto 2 so we can see that auto 0 and auto 2 are the inlet and outlet patches so let's take a look in uh, Paraview okay let's take a look in Paraview and let's type uh, press F5 okay we'll see that there are now new mesh regions so you'll go to properties and you'll just scroll up and down here and you'll see mesh regions uh, the mesh regions that are display uh, that you see now uh, these are the ones with the cross on them so you can untick that internal mesh and this whole thing will disappear all right so you can see what auto one auto zero auto one auto two are let's do auto one because we kind of know those are the pipe walls so you can see here auto one okay auto one okay uh, if you want to scroll like this like I'm doing here uh, press the right and the left mouse buttons at the same time and you drag it around I assume you are doing either Windows or Linux I don't have a Mac mouse so I'm sorry uh, I can't really tell you too much on that but uh, this this is what the surface looks like so if you take a look at the surface you see that it's very very smooth over here there's nothing like what we do with our topo set and create patch those are very useful tools to learn okay that's why I included them I mean also it's part of the, my learning process but uh, auto patch is this is what it does Let's take a look at patch zero. Patch zero is on the other side. Auto one is on this side, and you can see again the discs are very, very smooth, very, very nice, nicely formed. So this is what auto patch can do for you. Uh, yeah. So that's that's all we have uh, in terms of making the mesh more uh, much nicer. I mean at least for this video because we can still add layers and everything here that's another way to tweak this uh, mesh uh, but that's for another time I'm kind of running out of time here so again uh, let's let's make a make another file CPAR okay mesh mesh generation uh, auto patch mesh gen okay so I'm going to doing the auto patch method now so let's see auto patch mesh gen all right uh, what we want to do is do a all clean sure restore zero directory run application block mesh run application snapping X mesh okay so instead of topo set and create patch I will have uh, Okay, I will have instead uh, auto patch. Okay, transform points scale of how much? 
Okay, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. And then after that, what I want to do is auto patch. All right, uh, overwrite. Okay, with a uh, what do you what do you, what do you call that? Overwrite with a scale? No. Overwrite with a feature angle of seventy five. Okay, that should work for pipes. Okay, so seventy five degrees so, sort of your threshold angle. I'm gonna press enter. Okay, I'll do it all clean. Let's try running this auto patch mesh generation. All right, so it should take about thirty seconds to finish. So, um, hopefully, uh, when we have this script running, so I'm gonna let it run for another thirty-ish seconds. All right, thirty-ish seconds. Uh, then after that, uh, we can talk about yeah we can talk about uh, yeah we can talk about yeah pushing it up to git yes okay anyway the all, all the things here are done finish done deal and let's take a look at you know how our mesh looks like and we see that the refined snappy pipe poem is here because it's uh we touch the snappy pipe uh thing there all right so look at this this uh this is pretty nice unfortunately uh unfortunately i think our transform points kind of was a little off okay All right, so transform points. Did I oh did I type it wrongly? Transform points. Okay, say line ten transform points. Okay, I had a typo there. Okay, so let's let's do it again. Auto patch mesh gen. I I have to correct this typo. And I'll just run it again. And this time I'll fast forward. Okay, so let's very quickly take a look at what the files are like. Alright, let's very quickly take a look at what this refined snappy part of form is like. Uh yeah, it looks like the scale is right already. Very good. Okay, let's uh, load it again. Okay, so we take a look here. Uh, we can look at this uh, X scale. Okay, sorry. Look at this X scale, and you take a look. We the it is actually zero point four meters. Perfect. And if we we take a look at uh, no auto zero, auto zero is one side. Auto two is the other side. So what I'm doing is that I'm just clicking on certain mesh regions at the bottom here and I just press apply. Okay, so that uh, I can change and toggle which, uh, which uh, patch I'm looking at. But yeah, hopefully you're already familiar with these commands. I, I assume you are. So yeah, everything works nicely. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly push everything up to git. GitHub. So git add and git pull um git commit and auto patch and what else uh okay before i do that let's remove the locks i don't i don't want to upload locks to github yeah there you go anyway uh because you know actually locks when you when you have those log files they tend to take up a lot of space i've actually found but anyway, so uh, you don't have to do that, but uh, it's just my preference. Let's let's do again. Git add and git commit, and I'm gonna push everything up because I'm very sure that these are the changes I want to make. 
So auto patch and transform points script edit. Okay, and I'm gonna push it up to git git push. All right. So it's gonna do all of that. Uh, ask me for the password. And there you go. So that's it. Uh, things should be pushed up onto Git nicely now. All right. And let's take a look. Okay. Um, look, go to the experimental branch, and take a look here. See auto patch, and transform points are now added. Okay. You see this uh, new script over here. Very nice. Okay, so that's all I have for you this video. Auto patch and transform points, and I we put it on a branch so that we can you know play around with this this uh, this part before you know switching it back. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again. Bye bye.